Google just dropped VO3 and it's not just another upgrade. This thing can generate full scenes, cinematic camera movements, characters that look directed, not just prompted. It's doing things that until now just weren't possible with such consistency. We're talking about AI making trailers, ads, B-roll, and even full length films and looking good doing it. This isn't just good for AI anymore. It's just good. It was earlier this week we saw VO3 in action at the Google I.O. keynote and where we saw the announcement it was being released within the US. That's exactly what we want to put in your hands today. So I'm excited to share that we're upgrading and two AI subscription plans today. We will have Google AI Pro and the all new Google AI Ultra. With the Pro plan, which is going to be available globally, you'll get a full suite of AI products with higher rate limits and special features compared to the free version. This includes the pro version of the Gemini app that was formerly known as Gemini Advanced. Then there's the Ultra plan. It's for the trailblazers, the pioneers, those of you who want cutting edge AI from Google. The plan comes with the highest Google's made it clear that VO3 isn't aimed at casual users. The Ultra tier comes in at $249.99 a month, which definitely raises eyebrows. But this isn't built for casual users. It's meant for power users, agencies, studios, creators, and people working at scale. So if you're producing high-end content regularly, the cost starts to make sense when you realize what it's replacing. Camera crews, editors, motion designers, and even locations. It's not cheap, but it's also not supposed to be. Ultimately, this is a professional tool, even though this actual plan is for non-commercial use only. So really what we're looking at is kind of a pre-release. This is a way for power users to use the tool, understand its limitations, understand how they can replace things in their current workflow, use it on personal projects, and then later on down the line, that's when they may adopt it using an enterprise license. VO3 has a couple big advancements over VO2. VO3 can generate synchronized dialogue, ambient sounds, background music, so you end up with clips that feel lifelike from the get-go. Now maybe a lot of those sounds wouldn't be used in the final cut of a video, but having sound inbuilt into the video generation does prompt the creative process, makes it easier to come up with the final sound design. Google provided a demonstration of this at the keynote, which honestly was a little bit lackluster compared to what we've seen since that release and how people have been using VO3 and the results they're getting. More gas cars. <laughs> you can see uh, I'm kind of a kind of a misfit here, but uh, don't tell anyone I've just bought an electric car. Do you think we are in VO3? If you cannot tell, does it matter? Try not to burn this, okay? Now, obviously, VO3 still has some problems, just like all AI does. Sometimes the video generation doesn't come out very naturally. People move a bit strange. And there's that human element often kind of missing from the scene. However, one of the big steps forward is the consistency in things like faces. So in a lot of video models, it's really difficult to have a character in a video and then keep that character's face and appearance consistent throughout later scenes. VO3 makes a big step forward with this where you can upload images of someone you'd like to be a character in the video and it will try to keep as consistent to that image as possible going through later scenes. But obviously there's still some problems here and there's still going to be issues with consistency. We built new capabilities for filmmakers. So when you're making a video, it will use ingredients you give it. Characters, scenes, or styles and keep them consistent. Or you can direct VO, giving it precise camera instructions and have it shoot along a specific path. These capabilities help filmmakers fluidly express their ideas with VO. But when you consider the simple labor cost of things like animations, trailers, B-roll, advertisements, VO gets kind of 80%, 90% there at a very low cost in comparison. And with blockbuster films now sometimes reaching into the $300 million mark for production costs, AI is bound to take over a large chunk of that effort. In just a few years, we've gone from no real comprehensive AI video generation to a competent video generation tool with audio, built with filmmakers specifically in mind and able to put out high quality content, even if it makes many tries to get the perfect render.
in the past year or so, I've seen some really high quality AI short films pop up on YouTube using other platforms. And I wouldn't flinch if some of those were put out by say a AAA game studio or a small film studio as trailers. But ultimately those are made by amateurs. So if we imagine what tools like this are capable of when they're put in the hands of entire teams that are used to working on feature films, then I don't think it's a stretch to say that we probably expect future movies to be entirely AI generated. And instead of actors, you will have say licensed uh, appearances. Together with a single prompt, you can describe what you want, including very precise camera controls. Flow puts everything in place and I can keep iterating in the scene builder. Now here's where it gets really exciting. If I want to capture the next shot of the scene, I can just hit the plus icon to create the next shot. I can describe what I want to happen next, like adding a 10 foot tall chicken in the back seat, and Flo will do the rest. The character consistency, the scene consistency, <laughs> it just works. And if something isn't, oh, quite right, no problem. You can just go back in like any other video tool and trim it up if it's not working for you. But Flo works in the other direction as well. It lets you extend a clip too. So I can get the perfect ending that I've been working towards. Once I've got all the clips I need, I can download the files. I can bring them into my favorite editing software, add some music from Lyria. And now the old man finally has his flying car. I'd love to know what you guys think about this tool and tools like it. You know, how long do you think it's going to be before we see full feature length films using purely AI? How long do you think it's going to be before the creative process is kind of taken over by AI for things like trailers, uh, video game trailers, film trailers, advertisements, B-roll, anything like that. Um, and especially if you're in the U S and you actually have the ultra plan and you've been playing with it, leave a comment down below and let us know what you think.